You're watching Classic TV on Wayback Machine 1. Subscribe today. Hello, you're watching Classic TV and Movie on Wayback Machine 1. Subscribe today. I'd love to see you here. Thanks. Oh, well, it's time to turn on Classic TV. The shows you grew up with all for free. All right here on Wayback Machine 1 Classic TV. Ooh, yeah. Mr. and Mrs. North. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. and you're coming with me. Oh, Pam, I can't. Oh, Jerry, I'm very nicely twisting your arm. No, I'm sorry, dear. I'm tied up all afternoon. Business. Very important business. What could be more important business than buying your wife a gorgeous new gown? No, it's a promotion scheme for a new book that's coming out next season. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I feel like a martyr. I should write a book. <laughs> yes? Mr. North, Mr. Belknap is here again. Oh. Well, I'd better come out there, Miss Pennington. Be right out. Darling, one of my offices dropped by, and if I let him in here, he'll want to outline his entire new novel for me. Run along, darling. Be right back. And in what trance did I pose for this? Oh, you didn't pose for that, Mrs. Norris. Obviously, uh, Miss Pomeroy did. We look so much alike, it scares me. They're all contestants in their beauty contest this afternoon. Your husband's one of the judges. Oh, uh, yes, he uh, did say something about it. These are some last-minute pictures just came in. It's for that book Mr. North is publishing, Why Not Be Beautiful? The winner of the contest will win a golden apple, a trip to Hollywood, and her picture on the dust jacket of the book. My, what a lucky girl. All that and an apple, too. They call it the Miss Venus Contest. Don't know why, except maybe because it's been run off at the Apollo Theater. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, Venus and Apollo. Beats me why a girl would ever enter a beauty contest. Not that I ever would, of course. But uh, what do they get out of it? A few years? Then they're right back, only worse than they started. You would make somebody an awfully good mother, Miss Pennington. Oh, Mrs. North, not me. Haven't got time. Too busy. <laughs> I'll be running along now, dear. I, I borrowed a magazine in case the fashion show gets dull. Uh, anything your little heart desires. Oh, Jerry, you're such a nice, wonderful, understanding husband. Well, Pam, you're a very nice, wonderful, understanding wife, too. Goodbye, dear. Don't wear yourself out. Working too hard. No, not me. Hiya, babes. Good luck to each and every one of you. Kitty, I didn't recognize you with your clothes on. 
You got some great competition today, kid, but you can do it. I got to go out and fun and get some shots of those judges. Who wants to look at judges? Good luck, kid. Is this the stage entrance of the Apollo Theater? Excuse me, ma'am. I'll be with you in a minute. So I said to her, you should have kept me as your press agent. You wouldn't have wound up in B pictures. How many years did you... Kitty, baby. Gee, I thought you were here already. What have you done to yourself? You look better than ever. Well, I just oh, it's just that I'm so glad to see you, darling. Listen, doll, I got you a dressing room all to yourself. None of the other girls around here rate that much, but none of them rate with me either, baby. <laughs> You know what I did to you, kitty girl? I got influence around here. Now, you go on a number three spot. That's a very lucky number, see? And one of the electricians here, pal of mine, when you start walking across the stage, he picks you up in a rose amber spot. Here you are, dressing room C. Now, you're going to win that contest tonight, darling, and you and I are going to fly right out of here to Hollywood tonight. But I... Ah, you just close that big, beautiful mouth. Mm, I know what's worrying you. You don't have to think about Maud anymore. My attorney wired me this morning that he picked up the divorce papers. We can get married any time you want. <laughs> I'm coming. Oh, you die, you. I gotta beat it now, baby. I'll look in on you again before you go out and knock them dead. Good luck. Why, you great big stinker, you. What kind of a line is this you're handing me? Oh, Kitty, take it easy. I mean to take it easy, you big bum, and you're the one that's gonna make it possible. Don't hand me that. You got plenty stashed away. And all I gotta say to you, Mr. Desmond, is fork over that five grand before the banks close today, or Uncle Sam's gonna get a letter from little old me. And I guess you're old enough to know that when Kitty Pomeroy tells, she tells all. Oh, Kitty, have a heart. I got a heart already, and it's all mine. If I open my trap and spill just a few of the earnings that you never declared on your income tax, You'd be behind bars for the rest of your natural life. Why, oh, you dirty little rat. If I could break your neck. You lay a finger on me and I'll fix you but good. Now get out of here, will you? I gotta win a prize for my breathless beauty. Kitty Pomeroy, if it actually wasn't too good for you, I could wish you was dead. Get out! Seven years bad luck and I hope you get it. Gus, darling, what's the matter with you? No, oh, it's that Kitty Pomeroy. She's got her claws on me, but good. Oh, well, she's a devil, all right. She's been after me ever since she found out you and I are married. You come with me, Gus. We'll take care of Miss Pomeroy. Come in! Well, for the love of Mike. May I come in, Miss Pomeroy? Sure. Go in and close the door. I just don't believe it. I didn't either when I saw your picture. That's why I had to come and see for myself. Who are you? I'm Mrs. Gerald North. Gerald North? Say, ain't he one of the judges in this here contest? Yes, he is. Well. Well, ain't that just dandy? Look, Mrs. North, what'll it cost to buy your husband's vote? That's what you come for, ain't it? No, I didn't come for that. I just came because of what killed the cat. What? Oh, out of curiosity. I didn't get you at first. Well, now you're here, maybe we can make a deal. How about it? Couldn't you be curious about that? What do you want? Telephone call to you, Miss Pomeroy. Okay. Look, I'll be right back. Stay here, will you? I want to talk to you. May I have a few words with you, Miss Pomeroy? Oh, you see, I I'm... You have Mark madly in love with you. Isn't that enough? Can't you leave my husband alone? Oh, you don't oh. understand. Stop it, will you? Do you have to make life miserable for every man you've ever known? You'd better be careful, Miss Pomeroy, or you'll be sorry. I'm warning you. My dear young woman, I'm only trying to tell Listen, you... Listen, Kitty, I've known you for a long time, so don't try any of your airs on me. 
That Lady Catherine Pomeroy stuff doesn't impress me one little bit. Excuse me. What are you doing here, spying on me again? Oh, don't be silly. I'm gathering material for a special article for a magazine. Yeah, well, don't try anything funny, you see. I got the divorce papers today. You and I are all washed up. Oh, Mark, please. Give me another chance, please. Don't make a scene, will you? We've had it, Maud, I tell you, and I'm through. I saw you with that cheap little Pomeroy girl. Oh, Mark, how could you slip that low? Will you please not paw me? And don't call a girl I'm going to marry cheap. You wouldn't marry her. You bet your life I would. She's going places and I'm going with her. I took you for nothing. I taught you everything you know. How can you forget all that? I took you out of a trapeze act and put you in the big time. You bore me, Marge. You've always bored me. Not always, Mark. Just since the first day you met that Kenny Pomeroy. this line you're trying to hand me, Gus. And don't try to threaten me. Listen, I'm waiting for that five grand so I yonder with sucker. Men are such bums. Huh? Why didn't mean you pop? What am I doing? Whistling backstage. I'm out of my Chinese mind. Is it you, Mrs. Noah? Are you in here, Mrs. Noah? Kitty, baby, you're still in your clothes. Get out of them quick. I gotta get this contest rolling in about five minutes. But really, I... Oh, I go crazy every time I see you. You don't have to explain one little thing to me. It's in the bag, honey. We're holding all the aces this time. Now, let's get going. Girls on stage, everybody. Overture. Pomeroy, in there. Don't answer. Last time I seen her, she wasn't even ready. Hey, Fred, you better scratch Kitty Pomeroy. She's never gonna make it now. Go away. Thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mark Farrar, emceeing your Miss Venus contest. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in the wings of this theater, we have some of the most beautiful girls in the world. Each one ready to stake her claim to the title of Miss Venus, a title which will take her to Hollywood. Now, ladies and gentlemen, your applause will be greatly appreciated, and our honorable judges here will make a note of it. We're all ready to go, and I hope you are. Now, our first contestant is Miss Dixie Damore. Let's give her a nice big hand, shall we? Miss Dixie Damore. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Wasn't she lovely? And now our second contestant is Miss Mona Gregor. Let's give her a nice big hand, shall we? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And now, a very lovely little lady, Miss Kitty Pomeroy. Pardon me, ma'am. 
May I borrow those a moment? Certainly. I think I'm definitely going crazy. stage are the final contestants selected by the judges for the grand prize in the Miss Venus contest. If you will excuse me, I'll get their selection. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to announce the winner of the Miss Venus contest, the recipient of the golden apple, Miss Kitty Pomeroy. <laughs> now, won't you say a few words, Kitty? Well, folks, I'm absolutely speechless. But I would like to say, bless you one and all. And Hollywood, here I come. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. my wife or aren't you? Oh, Jerry. Pam, darling, you're shaking like a leaf. I'm so scared, Jerry. I'm so scared. Oh, I should think you should be. Now, what's this all about? Oh, you'll never understand. It all started as a kind of a joke. We looked so much alike, this Kitty Pomeroy and I, and you were one of the judges. Yeah, I know. I should have told you. I'm sorry. Now, now go on. Well, I was in here talking to Kitty before the show started, and she went to answer the phone, and, and then they couldn't find her, and I, I saw her bathing suit, and the music started, and next thing I knew, I was out there in a spotlight. And not much else. Now, now, what about this Kitty? Did they find her? I found her. Murdered. What? She's lying in the prop room across the hall. And, oh, Jerry, it's all my fault. Oh, what are you talking about? Well, if I hadn't played this joke, maybe she wouldn't be dead now. <sighs> Nonsense. When did you find her? Just now. I heard a moan from the prop room, and I went in, and there she was, dead. Oh, Jerry, I'm so scared. Shh. Listen. Someone went into that room across the hall. It's the prop room. I bet it was Mona. You stay here. I'll go in there. I'm going with you. I got you into this. Okay. Here. I'll take this. We may need it. Could be any minute, couldn't I? Jerry Hyde, it must be the murder. 
murderer. I'll be right over there. You trap him, I'll get him. You in here, Kitty? Hey, Kitty! What you doing here? I thought you'd come back. I gotta lay my cards on the table, Kitty. Three grand was all I could get together. But I'll get down on my knees in everlasting gratitude if you accept it. Then it wasn't you. It wasn't me what? You weren't in here. You, you, Kitty, you, didn't... you look scared. Oh, honey, don't cry. I'm sorry I said them mean things to you. I didn't mean to make you go and bust your mirror. I was so sure it was you. I don't get you. But you'll take the three grand, won't you? Look how much you owe Uncle Sam. Well, Kitty, you know the figures. It's almost twice this. Look, I want you to go down to the Internal Revenue Office. Tell them there's been a mistake. Give them this as the first payment and tell them that you'll pay them the rest as soon as you can. You mean that? You betcha. Oh, Kitty, you're an angel. I never thought I'd live to see the day I'd be saying that to you. But so help me, you're a real, live, breathing angel. Say, what is all this? Hey, is this a frame-up? Kitty. Shh. Kitty, are you decent? Hide again. It must be him. I'm in here, Mark. You did it, Kitty. We're on our way. Hallelujah. Listen, sweetheart, I got the plane tickets. We're gonna fly out of here tonight like a regular 20th century magic carpet. And I'll meet you in a few minutes. You throw some studs in the bag and I'll pick you up at the hotel. Phew. What's the matter, honey? Did I knock you off your feet? <laughs> Literally. Mark, I want you to tell me something on the level. Now, don't interrupt. It's very important that you and I get started off on the right foot. This is a big move you and I are about to make, and I want to be sure of where your wife fits in. Now, just a minute. How do you know she wouldn't try to get even? I know how wives are. They may not care a rap for their husbands. I can't say as I blame them. Husbands are a dime a dozen anyway. But you know the old saying about how hell hath no fury. She might do anything for revenge. How do you know she wouldn't try to kill me? She might take a carving knife and stab me in the back. She'd be guilty of murder and, and wind up in the electric chair. Give it to me straight, Mark. Do you think she might ever try to kill me? What are you talking about? Wow, that was close. Oh, this rope's been cut. Someone tried to kill you. Then I know who the murderer is. Who? Mona. My wife? Mona killed Kitty because she was jealous of you. Killed Kitty? What are you talking about? She's still here. Don't let her get away. Stop it, Mona! 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 Mona. Stop it, Mona! Mona! Mona. What do you want? I don't understand this kitty baby. This isn't kitty, Buster. This is my wife. What are you doing, darling? I'm figuring out my expense account for Hollywood. Hollywood? Darling, I want a trip to Hollywood. I'm going to be a movie actress and write a book. You don't understand, darling. Would you object if I went out with Clark Gable? It would just be for publicity purposes. Pam, listen. Maybe I should have lunch with Bob Hope. Dorothy Lamour could chaperone us. Pam, a girl named Kitty Pomeroy won the beauty prize. That's right, and I... Would... Kitty's dead and gone, so the beauty prize went by default to Mona Gregor. But I won it. 
It's a jip. I have my career all planned. Darling, I've had your career planned for a long, long time. As what? As my ever-loving wife. Oh, Jerry, how nice. <laughs> I don't mind giving up Hollywood at all. Machine One. <laughs> Subscribe now. <laughs> Thanks. Everybody loves Way Back Machine One. Everybody enjoys classic TV. Who knows? Come and join the fun right now. Way back machine one, classic movies and TV shows.